Good evening, and welcome to this worship service of MCC Sacred Journey. We're glad that you're with us this evening. I hope that if you're on Facebook, you give us a like or a love or comment. Let us know that you're sharing this experience with us. Earlier today at noontime, we recounted the story of how Jesus was arrested, how he was tortured, crucified, and how he died and was buried. And this evening's commemoration recounts one possible story of whatever happened after that. We gather this evening in a spirit of peace, and so I wish God's peace to you and invite you to share a sign of peace with whomever you might be with in person. If you have a candle or other source of illumination, I invite you to light it at this time. As a reminder that we are now in sacred time and sacred space, we begin by singing. I invite you to join in. As we begin worship this evening, let's recite the psalm that Jesus quoted when he yelled, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God, God, my God, why did you dump me miles from nowhere? Doubled, doubled up with pain. pain. I call to God all the day long. No answer. Nothing. I keep at it all night, tossing and turning. And you, are you indifferent? Above it all, leaning back on the cushions of Israel's praise? We know you were there for our parents, 
They cried for your help, and you gave it. They trusted and lived a good life. And here I am, a nothing, an earthworm, something to step on to squash. Everyone pokes fun at me. They make faces at me. They shake their heads. Let's see how God handles this one. Since God likes you so much, let God help you. And to think you were the midwife at my birth, setting me at my mother's breasts. When I left her womb, you cradled me. Since the moment of birth, you've been my God. Then you moved far away, and trouble moved in next door. I need a neighbor. They take my wallet and the shirt off my back and then throw dice for my clothes. You, God, don't put off my rescue. Hurry and help me. If you don't show up soon, I'm done for. Gored by the bulls, meat for the lions. Here's a story I'll tell my friends when they come to worship and punctuate it with hallelujahs. Shout hallelujah, you God worshipers. Give glory, you sons and daughters of Jacob. Adore God, you daughters of Israel. God, you have never let us down, never looked the other way when we were being kicked around. You have never wandered on to do your own thing. You have been right there listening. Here in the great gathering for worship, I have discovered the praise life. And I'll do what I promised right here in front of the God worshipers. God has taken charge. From now on, God has the last word. Our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what God says. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for Jesus, for his life, for his death, and for his rising again, but that's another story. May our commemoration of Jesus' life and his teachings and of his dying bring us closer to you and closer in relationship with the way that Jesus would have us travel. We ask this in Jesus' name and in all your many names. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. There was a man named Joseph, a member of the Jewish High Council, a man of good heart and good character. He had not got along with the plans and actions of the council. His hometown was the Jewish village of Arimathea. He lived in alert expectation of the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Taking him down, he wrapped him in a linen shroud and placed him in a tomb chiseled into the rock, a tomb never yet used. It was the day before the Sabbath the Sabbath just about to begin. The women who had been companions of Jesus from Galilee followed along. They saw the tomb where Jesus' body was placed. Then they went back to prepare burial spices and perfumes. They rested quietly on the Sabbath as commanded.
Good evening. Imagine, if you will, going back in time to ancient Jerusalem during the times of Jesus of Nazareth, or as he would have been referred to in the Hebrew, Yeshua. We are in the home, or actually in the courtyard, of the home of some followers of Jesus. They've opened their home to other followers who've traveled down from Galilee. This is a turbulent time. We've had a celebration in the streets a few days ago, and now there's been a trial, and Jesus, this day, Friday, has been crucified. This is the evening of that day, and we are observing the reaction of one of Jesus' followers, Mary, or as she would be called, Miriam of Magdala. Mary is one of probably the best known women among Jesus' followers. We know her as a woman out of whom Jesus cast seven demons. She is mentioned at least a dozen times in the Gospels, more than any other woman. We know that she was one of the women who supported Jesus during his ministry, so she was a woman of means. What we don't know, or what, rather what we have no evidence of, is that she was a prostitute. This was something that was a story that was created eight or nine centuries later. So now we are going to listen to Miriam as she reflects on this horrific day in a play entitled The Silent Seven. Enough is enough. I'm tired of having people I care for die. Hasn't there been enough death? Why is it? But a thousand zealots can hang from crosses in Galilee, and it doesn't touch me. This one here tonight pierces me. Yeshua, why did you have to die? You were fine and good. Peter, thought you were gentle. You were a prophet. Only Hosea was gentle. You were a flaming brand from the altar of God. You saw injustice and couldn't stand for it. You saw pain and were pained. You spoke out and were silenced. I speak to you as though you were still alive. I wish I could have brought you back to life. I wish I... You taught me to say I. Do you remember that? You need not be possessed. You told me. Somehow he understood. I had always belonged to someone. First my father, then my husband. When my husband died, my sons didn't know what to do with me. So they tried to find yet another man who would own me, possess me. You said I could be free.
Did you know how much I feared the heavens and the open earth? Do you know the comfort I find in walled houses and tiny closets? Even now, Even now, the fears and anxieties clutch at my soul. Even now, I want to creep back into the warm arms of possession. You said, when you swept the evils clean. When you broke the chains that I would have to keep my hands free and my spirit refreshed. I, I don't know that I can do that without you. Miriam, I am Miriam, you taught me to say. Just as you said, I am Yeshua, and the priests were angered. You are dead. Am I still healed? Am I still Miriam? Or am I one of the nameless possessed? You died too soon. I don't have my questions answered. I don't know if I can live without you. I loved you. You said that when people possess others, they become like demons. I helped you because you enabled me to live in the world around me. And I also helped you because I wanted a part of what you had and what you were. But I suppose you knew that too. You had a way of sharing your love and compassion with all who had need. But you never lost your soul to another's clutches. Some wanted you to be a king, but you quickly saw through that. Still others wanted you to reward the righteous and punish sinners, but you cursed the religious leaders and ate with outcasts. Others wanted you to be a high priest in a new temple But you said 
the spirit lived within and would be worshipped in hearts and in truth. You were Yeshua and you said what you wanted to say. They will call me foolhardy and wasteful. I have purchased fine spices and ointments. They will remind me of the homeless and the hungry and, and I will continue to aid and help them as you talk. But one last thing I want to give to you. It is the Sabbath now. And you understood things about the Sabbath and, and healing and souls and, and it may think me frightened again. And you would be right. I am frightened. The walls are calling to me with offers of comfort and care. <sighs> Give me the strength I need to leave this hole. I am frightened. I don't know. How you can help me now. But if you can, please do. Let us pray. Holy One, we hold in our hearts people around the world tonight who are suffering, people around our town, around our state, around our country, and we pray that your spirit of love would surround them with your care and with mercy. We pray that you would bring justice upon the earth, that all might have the goods they need to live, the right to make homes and use their talents and have families and care for those families. We pray for your earth that more people, that more nations might participate in the care of the earth, that it might be the beautiful garden that you planned for us. And even as we remember suffering, 
we thank you for all of the gifts that you have given us for love, for families, for holidays, for the beauty of the spring. and for all the intentions that remain in the silence of our hearts right now. We know that there is no Easter without Good Friday. We know that life and death are bound together, and we know that violence and healing are always connected. Today we sit and linger and witness to the mess of it all. We grieve and we keep vigil. We listen, we lament, and we open ourselves to how this story is still unfolding. And as Jesus taught us, we pray, Holy One, in the words that are on the screen or whatever words bring us closest to the Holy One, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the dominion and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're going to pause for a moment so that we might have an opportunity to be generous as God is generous. If you'd like to support our church's ministry, the link for electronic giving or for uh, telling you how you can use snail mail to make a gift, uh, the link is on the screen. If you'd like to support those who are in need in our community, we invite you to make a donation to Interfaith Assistance Ministry. And if our sibling LGBTQ refugees from Ukraine, our LGBTQ friends, siblings, sisters, brothers in Ukraine who are in danger, if they're on your hearts, there's a link that will show you how to con contribute to our denominations relief fund. Holy One, we thank you for all the things that you give us. I pray for those who give and those who are not able to give. May all of us in whatever way we can, not just thank you, but be part of your saving work on earth by sharing what we have with those in need. We ask this in Jesus' name and in all your many names. Amen.
Let us close by singing verses 1 and 3 of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. So let us wait with Mary and the other disciples, waiting in hope for a new day and for new life. And let us go with the blessing of the one who is creator and Christ and spirit and more names than we can imagine. Remember that God loves you. Go and share that love wherever you go and go in peace. Amen.